welcome, welcome, my lovely, lovely viewers, both live now on my live stream, which you can watch at demonmama.com, and who are watching on YouTube in the future when this becomes a Drama Mama segment on YouTube. Welcome. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I promise you, you will not regret it. We have an entire library of previous Drama Mamas that you can watch. If you like stuff like, uh, in, it, like down the rabbit hole, um, or other, or, or, uh, internet investigator or any of those sorts of things, you want to hit the sub button and go check out my library because I'm telling you, we put a lot of work into stuff on this channel, especially into the drama mamas. Today, we are going to be talking about Virgil, Texas, and you might go, damn, what a name, damn, Virgil, what a name, hell, Virgil, Texas, who is he? Is he some kind of like gun rights activist? Is he some kind of like Republican macho Spoon man senator? No, he's a nerd. But many people liked him and he is funny. I will say Virgil is a very funny individual. Um, <laughs> Virgil, more like virgin. Um, watch your words. You might, not, you might not get what you wish for with that. Uh, good for Gabby with the tier one sub. Thank you very, very much. Um, <laughs> Virgil, Texas, more like virgin sex pest. All right, all right, I'll let you have that one, but let's not poison the well, shall we? The point, the point of this section is to jump into a drama and get to the bottom of it so that people who might hear about the drama don't just grab whatever the first thing that they see is and they actually know what's going on and can think for themselves. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, there is a very popular lefty podcast out there called Chapo Trap House. Anybody heard of it? Anybody in chat heard of Chapo Trap House? It's very popular, honestly. Um, they're an incredibly, incredibly popular, um, you know, uh, lefty dirt. They basically uh, created the term dirtbag left or they became the icons of the dirtbag left. Um, they have the baseball crank logo that everybody recognizes. They look uh, like this, actually. This is what they look like right here. I'll, I'll just give you a, a quick look. This is what uh, the Chapo guys look like right here. You can you can see them. They um, have beards, except for this one. Um, and these, oh, and uh, right now Felix is being blocked by my camera. And I will try to fix that so you can see Felix over here. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Well, it doesn't seem like it wants to cooperate. Well, okay, you can see Felix. This is Felix right here, okay? Look, fuck fuck the tech stuff, okay? We've had some tech issues today. Just, just ignore, okay? So these guys are very funny. They're internet comedians. They do, they do a popular podcast. They're podcast bagillionaires. Not really. They're just podcast millionaires. Um, one of the most popular left-leaning podcasts in the entire world. And... You know, as a result, the Chapo guys have been canceled and, and uncanceled, you know, many, many times. And um, and they have a, a very, very strong fan base that goes to bat for them. And they have many, many critics that go to bat at them. And most of the time, there's not a whole lot to say about Chapo, right? Like, uh, they did some cool stuff uh, when Bernie was running. Um, they went out and actually did uh, door knocking for Bernie. Um, in swing states, which is pretty pog, um, they actually put like quite a lot of effort into that, um, which I think is respectable. I watched their show for like three years religiously. I loved, I watched every single episode. Um, I think my favorite episode that they ever did um, was an episode with um, a, uh, a, a, a aliens fan, a fan of aliens, like as in like alien, like UFOs, like a UFO fan and pseudo UFO expert, Haley. Um, and it was amazing. It was called, I think it was called Enter the Gray Zone or something like that. It was super, super good um, and uh, really fun. Uh, they've been on Sam Cedar's show. They've been on all kinds of stuff. And last year, there was a bit of drama um, in the podcast as Virgil, Texas, the guy with the glasses and no beard over here, this guy right over here, who you can see when I bring it up. You know, this guy over here, um, this is Virgil, Texas, right over here. So Virgil disappeared from the show sort of out of nowhere. And there was a lot of drama and speculation. Um, and as it turns out, it seems to be some kind of um, 
you know, it tends to be, so, yeah, Haley Glyphs, that's the person. Twitter.com forward slash Haley Glyphs if you want to follow Haley. Haley is a hella good uh, shit poster and also talks about a lot of po politics and stuff. I, I like Haley a lot. Virgil kind of just disappeared and it was very weird. Um, and a lot of people had questions about it. And the chapel guys basically refused to talk about it, except for Matt Chrisman, who eventually said that, like, he was just, they were basically having a fight with Virgil. And Virgil seemed to be working on other projects that he was more interested in. It turns out that project is a um, a uh, podcast known as Bad Faith. Some of you may know about Bad Faith. It is Virgil Texas and Bree uh, Joy Gray. Let's see if we can uh, get a little little quick image of that right, real quick. Let's see. Here we go. You may have seen this one. This is the this is the one we're talking about. Let me just bring this image up so you can see for yourself what we're talking about. This is this is bad faith pod. Okay. Now I've had some critiques for bad faith in the past. I think that they had a uh, really 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 bad conversation with uh noam chomsky i think they had a very very bad conversation with um with uh sam cedar debating over force the vote uh they were very vocal force the vote supporters and i felt like they were ter they were like terrible oh it froze again all right so let's talk about what's been going on okay because um as it turns out there has been additional drama with regard to Virgil Texas. Now I will note that we're not going to we're going we're, you know it's important that we talk about Chapo Trap House because you know Chapo Trap House uh is where Virgil really got his start. That is where Virgil got his name. It's uh you know Virgil uh became a famous member of that and then only recently left. But I will point out that whether you like or dislike Chapo Trap House Chapo Trap House isn't super involved in this actual drama, although they haven't really said anything about it to my knowledge yet. Um, that although they haven't really themselves said anything about it, um, it, you know they've more or less stayed in the in the distance. Um, but Virgil is at the center of this drama. Yes, we are going to be talking about the grooming allegations against. Uh, Chap ex Chapo Trap House and current Bad Faith st star, um, Virgil Texas. And if you're thinking, oh wait, this seems like kind of niche drama. Well, let me remind you that Bad Faith Pod, um, on Patreon is let's just say, um, v very very well funded. Uh, let me see if I can bring up their uh their page. Let's just take a look right now. Bad Faith is currently pulling in a whopping $30,548 per month. And this is not Chapo. This is just one member of Chapo and one other person who is currently bringing this in. So that is a, whoo, that is a lot of money. There are approximately 7,000 paying members of this podcast. This is a very, very popular podcast. That's incredible. That is wild, isn't it? That's a that's a lot. I can't even imagine getting that. I know I'll fix the camera uh, eventually, not right now. So yeah, give 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 Fawn thirty thousand dollars a month. That would be wonderful. I would support this completely. And Chapo Trap House themselves. I don't know if they actually list it. Let's find out. Let's see if we let's see if they've got it on their Patreon. See if they got it listed. Wow. $165,000 and, and 409, uh, sorry, $165,495 per month with 37,000 patrons. Holy moly. Now, of course, keep in mind, this is split across all the members of the, of the podcast, but this is per month. Per month. Now, the reason why I bring this up, um, wait, was I echoing? That's a little bit strange. Um, that's a bit weird. Um, now my point in bringing this up is not to say that it's bad that they make, um, money. It is not. 
I am okay with lefties making money. I am fine with people managing to find a way to live a nice life in this system. Seriously, I, I really am. Um, that is perfectly fine. However, we must acknowledge that this is a group with not just a lot of money, but this is a group with a lot of influence. So in these spaces, I think it is important to take, um, uh, it is important to take these things seriously. Okay. Now, inevitably, all internet drama has a certain level of frivolity to it, right? We're all just logging in. We only see it happen on our screens. But for some people, for many people, that is not actually what's happening. And, you know, there, there are real people involved in the creation of these things. So that's why I like to go in and dig in a little deeper. And so today, we are going to start at the source, okay? Which is, of course, as all good internet drama is, a Twitter thread. A, a Twitter thread by a user who is using uh, apparently a pseudonym by uh, uh, known as Jennifer Seberg. Okay, so let's read this. Okay, Jennifer Seberg. Now, for those just so that we're we're clear from the get go, this account was created this month, and this appears to be a totally anonymous account brand new using a pseudonym and that is not necessarily uh to be said to, to discredit anything but it should be it should be recognized that there are limitations to twitter allegations so before we go in and before we uh we say anything about it i just want it to be open and clear for the beginning this is a new account this appears to be a pseudonym so let's read the allegations and we'll go from there this is uh, and a warning this is dealing with some very heavy stuff so i'm going to give the obligatory trigger warning for sexual assault grooming sexual abuse okay just keep that in mind you are not obligated to stick around if that's the case i try to give um courteous trigger warnings in advance of any sort of content like this sometimes we talk about serious stuff even on drama mama which we're doing today so let's get into it okay here we go when i was a teenager i thought virgil texas was very funny i asked him to proofread an essay i submitted to a website and i emailed it to him the essay was about turning 16. we talked a little bit and i thought he was very cool because he was funny and he lived in new york well that that is cool i mean living in new york is kind of cool and being funny is pretty cool right okay after talking, we shared phone numbers and texted late at night when I was alone in my childhood bedroom. That turned into FaceTiming and him talking to me about Marie Calloway, who I think was his girlfriend at the, mo at, the at the moment. I remember he sent me a Soko song about a woman jealous of another woman. After Marie left New York, Virgil, whose real name is Justin, and I started FaceTiming more regularly. If I remember correctly, school was not in session for me, and I could stay up late with him on FaceTime. I believe that we were in a long-distance adult relationship as he requested things of that nature from me. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I recall that this was around the time of Rebel Girl, where Sam Hyde performed. I don't want to give explicit details of what happened over FT, FaceTime, but I think you get the idea, and it was traumatizing to me for many years. Eventually, Justin lost interest in me, not after telling me that I had a nice chest, not the words he used, for my age, and made fun of people with autoimmune diseases. That is making an AIDS joke, just so you know. And we stopped communicating. I went to college a year or so after. During college, I started to realize that this wasn't normal and that it had a negative impact on my emotional health. I asked Marie for help, and she said, what do you want me to do? I felt awful, like it was all my fault. It was a terrible time in my life. I tried to forget it for a few years until the Daily Caller emailed me asking me to talk about my relationship with Justin. I was terrified for weeks, and it felt disgusting because an awful publication was talking to me about my trauma to try and monetize it. We know what the Daily Caller's all about. That is a right-wing rag. I tried to forget about it after that. 
However, I started seeing him with AOC, with Chelsea Manning, with the Bernie staffers. Uh, the Bernie staffer here being referred to is uh, Brianna Joy Gray. And I started feeling like anything I ever said against him would immediately label me as conservative, pro-Trump, etc. It made me feel so disgusting that someone who is lauded as a champion of my political beliefs did this to me. He fucked with my head at a very young age, and now I realize that even though he is much more successful now than he was when I met him, that it is still disgusting. Even though he believes the same things I believe, things that are egalitarian and pro-worker, I refuse to excuse him for his abuse of me. I recommend all women in his path stay incredibly cautious. Thank you for listening. And of course, there has been some addendums since then. I also found a stupid Woody Allen paper that I wrote after he told me to watch Manhattan. This is a picture of a paper. This is, uh, I can't access my iMessages without having an iPhone, but I did find this in my teenage iCloud account today. This is a picture of a younger uh, Virgil Texas with his name in there and presumably his accurate numbers. He also extensively made fun of the fact that I bought a vape back then, but from what someone told me yesterday, I guess he vapes now. Yes, he vapes a lot. I'll be a little more explicit for you. He asked me to perform sexual acts for him on camera, and he liked the novelty of my virginity. He commented on the size of my breasts. He also masturbated during this, but he didn't like showing that on camera as much. To those saying that my story is fake because I did not refer to the other podcast host by name, obviously she hasn't had the time to think about everything I said and reply, and she hasn't done anything to me. I don't want to immediately associate her with this. This is Brianna Joy Gray. I'm not right wing. I am initially hesitant to stare, share this story because I knew some would feel that it's fake due to his popularity as an internet leftist. If you do not believe me, please keep it to yourself as I've already been stressed enough the past 12 hours. Thank you for reading. And also there was a small correction. Uh, the story I sent him was not was about not was about not being 16 anymore, but was about turning 17. I hope this doesn't change any of the narratives. I made a small error um, in writing this. Okay. Wow, that's a lot, right? Yikers! That is a a lot, lot, lot. Minor is a minor. Yes. So that's a lot that's been brought out. So let's go over the allegations that have been uh, formally, you know, brought forward. And I'm going to type these down and we'll be able to review this document as we do on Drama Mama pretty much every single time. I make a little document, we take down news, and we try to figure out what we can corroborate, if anything, at all. Okay? So, allegations. Grooming. Ex that's an explicit allegation of grooming. Internet, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, soliciting nudes and live sex acts from a minor. This is implied, I believe. Let's see, let us double check and make sure. I want to make sure we get everything as straight as possible, as, as straightforward as possible. Um, let's take a look here. If this was actually alleged, let's see. After talking at age 17, we shared numbers and texted. That turned into FaceTiming and him talking to me about Marie, Marie Calloway, who I think was his girlfriend. Let's find out when they broke up. So Marie Calloway and Virgil, Texas, break up. Let's find out. I don't know if we can actually find that. Hmm. I don't know if we can actually find that. Hmm. Maybe they don't say it, but that would be revealing. Okay. So there is an implicit, there is an implicit allegation of, um, there is an implicit allegation of, of soliciting sex, sex acts from a minor over FaceTime. Although Jennifer Seberg does not claim necessarily that this happened before they, before she turned 18. That is something that I think is important to note down. 
Um, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't mean that, that, that there was no wrongdoing. That just means that there's not, it's not clear as to whether the FaceTiming happened before or after 18. I assume based on, on how it is talked about that it probably did happen before the age of 18. And that's why I'm saying that there is an Im implicit, um, uh, there is an implicit allegation of soliciting nudes and live sex from a minor. There is a allegation of abusive and manipulative behavior. That is an explicit allegation talking about, uh, like de talking down at the minor about all kinds of different things, appearance, whatever. And then we also have an allegation against Marie Calloway of, uh, of, of sort of like gross indifference, like just, Hey, like this is happening to me. And Marie Calloway's is like, there's nothing I can do about it. It's not a severe allegation, but, um, of, uh, indifference from Marie Calloway who may or may not have been in a relationship with Virgil Texas at the time. Now, there have already been some articles written about this. So we're going to look at one of those articles. Now, some of you may remember the last, uh, one of the last drama mamas that we did was a drama mama about allegations against one of the game grumps. And that was very, very complicated, wasn't it? Uh, do we recall, um, do we recall this episode? Um, some of you may, some of you may not. In our previous episode, we came across an article that was so poorly written and interestingly it was by the same website a different author i will note but the same website that we will be visiting with today so we will see how the reporting from the daily dot compares with its reporting on a previous allegation situation um in in the previous allegation it was discovered that the the person who made the initial allegations did not claim many of the things that the article claimed. So I want to see, out of curiosity, what the reporting on this so far has been like, to see if it's more accurate, to see if it sticks to the source more, and to get another perspective, okay? Let's look. Ex-Chapo Trap House host Virgil Texas accused of grooming a teen. That is correct. That is correct. He was explicitly accused of, a gr of grooming a teen. A 24-year-old Twitter user accused Virgil Texas of Chapo Trap House fame of engaging in an inappropriate relationship with her when she was a minor. The Twitter user, who joined the platform in June under the name of Jennifer Seberg, made the allegations against Texas on Wednesday. Texas is an ex-host of the popular leftist podcast Chapo Trap House and the current host of Bad Faith, a podcast he co-hosts alongside of Brianna Joy Gray, former press secretary for Senator Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign. Rumors that Texas dated a teenager have been circulating online for a while. In April, Twitter user Menshevik M, oh, we can check this out, tweeted, did the rumors about him dating an underage girl get him in trouble? Why are all his close friends being so tight-lipped about it? On May 19th, Chapo Trap House released a statement saying Texas was departing from the podcast in order to pursue other creative pod, uh, projects. He spent four years at the company as a co-host, co-producer, and collaborator. According to Seberg, Texas alleged abuse began years ago. When I was a teenager, I thought Virgil Texas was very funny. We read this part. After talking, Seberg said she and Texas exchanged phone numbers and texted late at night when she was alone in her bedroom. She said that they eventually began FaceTiming and often talked about his alleged girlfriend at the time, um, Mary Calloway. After Calloway left the picture, the FaceTimes increased. Um, and here we have some more. She did, uh, Seberg did end up giving explicit details of what all happened during those FaceTime calls. She also, here we go, we already read this part. After Texas lost interest, Seberg said she went to college where she began to realize how abnormal their alleged relationship was and its negative toll on her emotional health. Now, just so we know, so far, this article is significantly more responsible than the one that we saw last time. We have use of terms like alleged. Um, we have a, a careful... Um, adherence to the facts of the situation, quoting, or at least the facts of the allegation, I should say, not of necessarily the situation, the facts of the allegation, literally pulling directly from the source, not 
alleging anything that the original allegations did not. He fucked with my head at a very young age. We read that. She said after she came forward, the Daily Caller inquired about their relationship. And after she saw Texas sharing a platform with people like Gray, Representative, Representative Ocasio-Cortez, um, and Chelsea Manning. I was terrified for weeks. Uh, the, the Daily Caller stuff happened. Seberg's testimony was met with mixed reactions. Many users thanked Seberg for coming forward and applauded her bravery in doing so. Sorry to read about this experience you had and the reaction you got from that woman is, also, is awful as well. Oops, didn't mean to click that. Uh, thank you for coming forward. It's brave, necessary, and will be very helpful for women out there. Take good care of yourself. Everyone in, DSA, in the DSA world has heard rumors about him doing things like this, and none of them have ever cared. It's practically an open secret. She ended her thread by thanking those who followed along and urged all women in his path to stay incredibly cautious. Texas did not respond to the Daily Dot's request for comment at the time of publication. The time of publication of this article being June 9th at 8.21 p.m. So that would have been the same day later that night. Okay, you know, reasonable. I mean, reasonable that somebody may not have responded by then. But they haven't amended it with any response. So presumably Virgil Texas is not responding to these allegations, which is a little bit, you know. So have there been, so there have been previous allegations of the same kind against Virgil. There have been rumors, but the problem is with rumors is that it is very difficult to, um, to confirm rumors. So as of yet, I have been unable to find any sort of, I have, I've been unable to find any sort of uh, solid rumors or anything like that. Um, and and uh, as of right now, there isn't actually a whole lot further that's being followed up with this. Um, if you if we just do a quick Google search here, the first story that comes up when you when you search it on Google is the Daily Dot article that we just read. Then we have something by Me Aw, which I don't know anything about um, Me Aw. Uh, this seems to be more or less, a. this is almost an identical re repost of, yes, this is an almost identical re-reporting of the original article that appeared on the Daily Dot, um, but by a different person, but very, very, very similar. Um, very little extra added. Yeah, almost nothing extra added. Um, and now we have a know your meme article on this, uh, the background developments. It, it's, it's not very much. Sadie Doyle, uh, says, I'm not going to try to be witty and just say that the tech Virgil Texas allegations have been semi-public for a long time. Even so the victim's fear of coming forward for how she'd either be used as a Republican talking point or condemned as an enemy of the left is very understandable. So this is Sadie Doyle here, um, and yeah, there's not a whole lot of references here. We have Sadie Doyle's statements, we have the, the quotes there, and almost nothing else has actually come out about this. Now, I would love to have seen some, uh, you know, follow-up on this. This is, this is very difficult. T allegations have been semi-public for a long time. Well, let's see them then. Where are, where are those? Who's talked about that? This is, the, this is the initial allegation, and it's very difficult to find anything else. Hmm. Which is a little difficult. And unfortunately, this account has yet to provide... A whole lot more, although I am seeing here something else. This right here. This is from uh, dailycallernewsfoundation.org. Hello, my name is Blank, and I'm a reporter working on a story about Virgil, Texas. I've been told you might have some helpful information. Please let me know if you'd like to talk. This was in 2018, which would have been when this person was 21, correct? October 2018. Yeah, that'd be three, approximately three years ago. So they would have been 21. And this is, these are the closest things I have. Looks like Virgil was also uh, 
was there was oh this was the article and this was an email back from Virgil from 2013 which 2013 would have been Jesus that would have been what five years prior to that so the math is adding up to 21 19 18 17 16 15 that adds up approximately correct somewhere uh, this this makes right hold on let me see let me make sure i'm getting this correctly seven years ago so they're 24 for three yes that would have been 17 that's correct that's an email to virgil no no this is this is an email to yes this is an email to virgil that was dated june 19th 2013 now oh i i don't know let's find out that's a very good question is this was he even going by Virgil, Texas? Well, let's find out when he started using the name Virgil, Texas. Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, so he doesn't even have his own article. This might be a little bit difficult to, uh, to determine when he first started using that. But that's what we're here for, right? That's a very, very good question. Let's see what we can find here. We got LinkedIn. Let's see. Virgil, Texas, internet user. Let's see. I don't know if this is the real one. Pod chaser. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's find out, everybody. We're going to find out. Wow, there's a lot of appearances. Holy moly. How do we sort? Let's see if we can sort. My God, this might be very difficult to actually figure out when he started using that. If anybody has an idea of how we could figure that out, that would be amazing. But right now, it's looking like it's going to be very difficult to determine when he actually started using that. Off the, off the, off the cuff. That's a very interesting question. So far, definitely was using this name in 2017. Seems to be, as I'm looking at a, a, a website that has documented all of Virgil Texas's pod, podcast credits, and it looks like at the, on this website, and I'll show you right here, this website has his her earliest appearance on a podcast under the name Virgil Texas in 2016. So the earliest we have is 2016, which is uh, not when the email is from. We need to confirm if Virgil Texas was using the name Virgil Texas in 2013. Let's find out. Actually, there's another way we might be able to find this out. Okay. Hold on a second. Let's see if there's a tool for this. Because if you look here... The Virgil Texas Twitter account has existed since August 2008. Now, I don't know if that means that he was going by this name. Keep in mind that you can change your Twitter name. But his earliest podcast was a podcast with Felix called the Carl Diggler Podcast. All right, let's see what we can find out about that. Carl Diggler Podcast, Virgil Texas. Let's see. Okay. Let's find out. Let's find out. 2014, Virgil Texas is cited in an article from 2014 under the name Virgil Texas. Okay. So it does look, it does look like it is very likely he was using that name in 2013. Now that doesn't prove anything about this specific email, does it? It doesn't at all, uh, but it does grant credence. It, do, it doesn't like if, if Virgil Texas had not been using the name Virgil Texas in 2013, that would have basically been a nail in the coffin for the email, right? There would be no reason why somebody would be emailing Virgil Texas if he didn't go by that name. So we've, we've been able to eliminate that. We have this here. Oh, interesting. Radical Jainism. Very helpful. 
Oh, we can use Google Trends. Good idea. Good idea. Google Trends is a good one. Let's find out. Google Trends is indeed a good one. Good idea. Let's take a look here. Virgil, Texas. Earliest use appears to be, let's see, a lot in January 2004. And then it spikes up majorly early 2020, of course. But it appears to have been use in use at least as far back as 2004. Virgil, Texas as one term. Let's see. American writer Virgil, Texas. 2009, 2009, 2011, 2012. Yep, it does appear. Ah, interesting. So yes, it does appear that Virgil, Texas has been using this t name for quite a while. The Twitter account in 2013 had a link to his website. I'm going to check when it was registered. This is good information. We are doing internet sleuthing. The domain name was created in 2010. Okay, let's take a note down then. We're going to note this all down. Notes. Virgil, Texas. Pseudonym. Has been in use since 2010 when the domain name for the website was registered though google trends show it pseudonym has been used since 2004 uh virgil texas twitter account existed since 20 or since 2008 and in 2010 had a link to the virgiltexas.com okay interesting check this link sure let's take a look at this thank you von Tux. let's check this let's check this link that i've been provided thank you all for uh for adding some good little things to chat to to follow here here we go this is this is from December of 2011, which would have been two years before the email was alleged to have been sent. Arthur Rimbord, Virgil, Texas. Famous crab caught with underaged mollusk. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. Bruh! Bruh. We have... We have some memes. These are definitely his type of jokes. Virgil, Texas. Virgil, Texas. Virgil, Texas. Now we can jump forward to this exact same page in the future. Here we go. This is it archived in the future. Let's see if we can get some other ones. Let's see if we can keep it consistent. If we jump forward on this, is this indeed the same account? Let's find out. Let's go forward. Can we jump forward here? Here we go. Let's keep watching. Let's keep going. And then we're going to do another quick thing. Uh-oh. This is looking like it. VirgilTexas.com. We're getting into 2015. Sorry, this website is slow. 2017. That's the picture. This is indeed the correct account. So, we can absolutely confirm, thank you, to the Internet Archive, that Virgil Texas, the name, has been in use during the time that these allegations are referring to. So, confirmed history of Twitter account, Virgil, Texas, pseudonym, has been in use with official website since 
2010 to 2011. Well before the allegations were said to have taken place. Okay. Yeah, we can actually see. Uh, well, no, they wouldn't have followed each other because this account has only just been created. The Simpsons Woody Allen. Yeah, that's a little weird, isn't it? Isn't that a little bit odd? That's that's a little weird. I, I'm not going to lie. That's a little bit weird. That's a little weird. Um, the, the, the Woody Allen posting is, is a little fucking weird. Okay. This, oh, we have something else. Okay. Now I have no idea. What is this website? Somebody, wow, this website gets a fuckload of visitors. This is a, a archive that was made in 2016. Weird Twitter keep. Weird Twitter creeps. Justin Cass, a.k.a. Justin Compson, a.k.a. Virgil Texas, engaged in a relationship with a 16-year-old girl as an adult male. This post, though from a random website, is indeed dated to 2016. And that's a bit strange, isn't it? Now, this is not a source, but it does indicate that at least somebody else was making the allegation that he was engaged in a relationship with a 16-year-old girl in 2016. So I'm going to I'm gonna, we're going to put a little save on this one for the time being. We're just going to we're going to come back to this one in the future. I don't know that it's particularly useful. A post from 2016 alleging the uh alleging Virgil Texas had relationship with 16 year old girl okay all right well virgil currently uh let's find out let's find how old virgil is let's find out i don't know if we have that information we probably do somewhere all right, so he's in his 30s, but people haven't confirmed. I don't know. It's got to be here somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. It's got to be here. We ha Somebody has to have this here. Oh, yep. You can even confirm the, uh, the Twitter user numeric ID is correct. Think he's 37? Okay. Well, regardless, let's put, let's say this. If, regardless, unless he is literally 25, unless you're saying he's 25, at which point he would have been the same age. Unless you're, unless you're saying Virgil, Texas is 20, is 24, the same age as this person, then there's no way that he would have also been underage. He would have been an adult. Okay. People guess he might be younger than 30. I don't think he's younger than 30, but that could be true. I, I'm not 100% sure. Let's, you know, maybe we can find that out. If somebody can get a source on his age, I don't think that's an accurate guess. He would have needed to be the same age as this person, 24, for it to have been not, not uh, a, you know, an issue. But we can probably look, right? We can look at when he... um. Sam Hyde and Virgil Texas actually had a conversation about this. Didn't. Didn't, didn't they? Let's see. Yes. In 2013, right here, which this lines up, by the way, with the claims. 2013, June 3rd, 2013, Virgil Texas introduces... Um, the sam hyde at rebel girl now this is him right now i don't think that he looks and I, and i apologize maybe this is a little bit messy but i don't think that virgil looks or sounds 17 here okay i'm gonna guess he's not 17 here are a legendary comedy group they did williamsburg street fashion and an inconvenient anime 
So, yeah. And, uh, you know, this was, this was a previously, um, this was like a previously sorted, um, uh, drama. There's been, this has been sorted out. We're not really gonna, we're not really gonna do it. Yeah. We're not gonna go into that thing. There's a whole thing with Sam Hyde and all of that, um, that we could talk about, but it's not really, it's neither here nor there. Um, we're not really doing, uh, you know, the, the guilt by association stuff. Well, some people are very private about that sort of thing, aren't they? They're very private. I'm sure he's mentioned it before. Um, he, 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 I, I'm sure he's, uh, I, I'm sure he's, um, you know, mentioned it in a podcast or whatever. It, he doesn't look or sound 17. I think it's unrealistic to believe that like a 17 year old would have that type of, uh, of, um, of, uh, clout to be able to, to, to pull that off. The, the be an MC at a major event? I, I don't think so, right? And also keep in mind that Virgil Texas had been, um, you know, had had a writing career of some sort to that degree. It's, 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 I don't think it's reasonable to say that like he was probably 17 at that time. Now, if that's the case, all right, that's fine. Sure. We can talk about that if if it comes out that he was actually 17 at the time but i don't think that's accurate as, as my understanding he is currently in his 30s which would have mean which would have meant that he is indeed he was indeed an adult at the time of these allegations so hmm let's see real quick if we can find out a little bit more information let's see So a quick a quick search on Twitter. I just searched Virgil Texas underage. This is from 2020, September 10, 2020, long before the actual um before the actual, you know, this allegation started. He was still writing for his college newspaper in 2008. Okay, we'll take a look at that. But look at this. In 2020, we had some somebody say, you started a podcast with a Nazi sympathizer who dates underage girls. It's an underage teenager. Uh, let's see. Okay, Virgil, Texas, uh, groomed an underage girl, but did he break her bones until she became a literal crab? I don't think so. What the fuck? This is from 2021, okay? This is from, this is from now. Open secret in the DSA community. Everyone in the DSA world has heard rumors about him doing things like this, and none of them have ever cared. This is some random account. 14K followers, a lot, but nonetheless, a, 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 nothing, there's, there's nothing here. That's, this is, this is some of the problems that we're, that we're running into. We do have somebody repeating these allegations in 2010. We have another allegation from 20 or sorry from 2020. We have another allegation from 2020. This is a separate account. Appears to be it's some sort of Democrat account. Yeah, so a little weird. Why don't you ask him why don't you ask Virgil about his underage girlfriend and why he disappeared when they brought it up on air? This is weird. These are a lot of these are from 2020. So it does appear that there is some credibility to the claim. There is at least some credibility to the claim that these have these rumors have been around for a while. That's, you know. Now <sighs> 
let's 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 summarize what we've got so far. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. It, this is a public figure we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. So this is where things are going to get really weird. Okay, everybody. Are you prepared? Are you are you ready for things to get really fucking weird? Things are about to get really weird. Okay. They're all between 35 and 40 years old. Yes, that's what I believe. That is that is what I believed. Okay. Um, so let's summarize what we have so far. We have an allegation of grooming, and the evidence that we have for this is the allegation itself from Twitter with um, very light circumstantial with very light evidence. We have an, e an image of an email from 2013 going to Virgil, Texas. No response email image. We have an image of a Woody Allen essay, which aligns with part of the story. We have no evidence outside of the allegation of uh, soliciting nudes or anything like that. Or sex acts. We just don't have any evidence of that besides the allegation itself. Yes, anonymous person with no evidence and a few screenshots of redacted emails. What, uh, I don't, I don't care what music you listen to. It's okay to, it's okay to listen to problematic, um, problematic stuff. Wasn't the story about turning 17? Yes, but the timeline still lands up. The, the timeline still, la, la, uh, lines up. They stated the email was titled 16 because they were no, they were turning 17 and they wrote that about that. They were 16 and they were turning 17. That's a really minor issue. I don't think that that's like, I don't think that that's a reasonable, like, uh, disqualification here. Abusive and manipulative behavior, no evidence outside of the allegation. However, we do have, what we do have is circumstantial evidence that aligns with the story. Timeline is, timeline appears to be correct and, uh, and public event and can be, and is loosely corroborated by public appearances at the time. Okay. So. Okay. Do we know his his real name? Yeah, it's Justin uh Justin Koss or Justin Cass, I think it is is what was said. I think I can uh I think we have this here. Um Let's see here. Justin, uh, yeah, Justin, hold on, I just, I just had this open and now I don't, uh, I apologize, I closed that one, I believe it's Justin Cass, yeah, Justin Cass, all right, Okay. So we don't have a lot to go on. And I think it is important that we take allegations seriously as best as possible. But let's be real. There isn't much here and there hasn't been much provided. What we've been given by the person who is alleging this is quite frankly, I, I, I don't know. Like, like how can we, this lines up, but this is a, a, Reda heavily redacted email 
this is a, a heavily redacted email that could have easily been uh, photoshopped or, or edited. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just true. This type of image, you can create this type of image easily. Panda Atlas, thank you very much. I appreciate it very, very much. I'll be reading all these afterwards. Thank you. This is very thin evidence. We also have this, which is, again, likely, I mean, it appears to be a real thing. This is what what G Gmail looks like, but we have no we have no idea if this is even real. This could have been edited. Uh, this could have been edited very easily. We don't have the response, which is very strange. Why don't we have the response? We have this contextless image of a pages document from 2013 titled Woody Allen, and we have. Uh, I don't know what this is. I have no idea what that is. We have this. We have Justin Cass and some phone numbers. Now, these phone numbers are have also been redacted, so we have no idea. The iCloud contacts have been fully redacted. And it is possible that these are legitimate. Do we know that this is his e actual email address? As far as we can tell, yes. VirgilTexas at gmail.com. Let's double check. We can find that out. Let's find out. He should have it listed, should he not? Let's find out. Where is it? What, virgiltexas.com? Is that website even, is that website defunct? It appears the website is defunct. Oh yeah, we got a full drama stream. Yes, indeed. We are digging way into this drama. We're going to try and get to the bottom of it. Let's find out. Can we? Let's see. It looks like Chapo Trap House uses Gmail. P Bad Faith uses Gmail. I think it's very reasonable to assume that that is indeed a real email. Um, it doesn't seem to be listed, but it looks like Chapo uses Gmail. It looks like... Um, it looks like... Uh, it looks like that Bad Faith uses Gmail. I think it's reasonable to assume that it could be. Yeah. But but again, very, very, very circumstantial. None of this actually proves or really even reinforces the allegations. Doesn't everyone use Gmail? Well, not everyone. No. Yeah, I take pedo accusations very seriously because I think it's very easy for people to jump on them. Okay? I mean, look, if you go right now, I can show you right now. Look. Like Chapo Trap House uses a Gmail email. They use a Gmail one. That's like, okay, that's fine. Like, it, you know, it's reasonable to assume he would have a, G a Gmail email. Yeah. A lot of people still use Yahoo and others use iCloud and shit. Yes, of course, of course. We're still working on that, Von Tux. But as of right now, we really don't have a whole lot to go with, do we? This is basically it. Now, this story's been sitting out here for two whole days. And we haven't gotten a whole lot back. And I really wish, uh, I really, really wish that we could get more information. But we don't seem to have it. And keep in mind that as of right now, Jennifer Seberg has not, has not tweeted in 23 hours. At least not on their main. They have, uh, wow. I will say this though. Take a look at this. Chapo Stone Toss says, Chapo Trap House host caught grooming underage girl. Jennifer Seberg says, hi, I want to express that I do not want or accept your support. I refuse it. Your behavior and your comics are vile. Okay. Hey, that's respectable. That's respectable. And I would say, um, I, I would say that, uh, there, you know, that is, uh, something, I, I don't know. Personally, I don't think that if I was, uh, if I was somebody who was doing this in bad faith, that I would yell at somebody to not support me because they're a bad person.
And this person has been responding to a lot of people. Like, like a lot of people. And we need to address something else, okay? Um, oh, there were many people accusing her of being a right-wing plant. And one of these, which got very popular, we are going to look at, okay? Yeah, I'm going to see if we're going to... We'll see. We'll see what happens. It might be possible. I don't know if they're responding um, to things. We could, uh, you know, perhaps... It would be very hard, you know, I don't want to put anybody in danger. I don't have, like, an institution behind me. I'm just a streamer. We're just trying to get an idea of of whether this drama is like super legit or whether this is something that is like we need a lot more evidence for what does it matter he's a white dude he's going to get away with it well i mean we don't know that right we don't know that that's why we're looking into it right now virgil as far as i know has not made any statements about this and it has gotten a lot of attention, by the way. This has gotten an incredible amount of attention. Um, and the last time Virgil tweeted anything was on June was on June eighth, so a day before this actually happened. Court of public opinion is far more brutal than court of law when it comes to public figures. Make their pockets hurt and all that. I mean, yeah, but we have to, we want to make sure that that's a just thing, right? So we need to talk about another thing, okay? Let's, let's, let's get this one out of the bag, okay? Here we go. For your information, the Jennifer Seberg account was made this month. We can't verify anything they're saying. No article and no website that they supposedly submitted to. The name is fake and a direct reference to Jean Seberg, a woman smeared by COINTELPRO until she killed herself. It's a troll. Hi, I saw your tweets and I wanted to privately tell you something. Jennifer Seberg is a fake name. I am trying to protect myself because I've already gotten shitty messages. I chose this name because he suggested a book about a teenage girl to me that it was d adapted into a movie starring Gene Seberg. I hope that clears it up for you. Gene Seberg killed herself because of COINTELPROVE. It reads as a troll move. At the very least, you could either post the messages he sent or the article you wrote at the time. I actually think that her... Legacy adds a realistic element of fear I've experienced, but I did that mostly because he recommended and then it cuts off. Hmm. And then we have the article for Gene Seberg. During the late 1960s, Seberg provided financial support to groups supporting civil rights, such as the NAACP, as well as Native American shooting groups, such as, uh, or sorry, Native American school groups, such as the Mikowski Buck, or M Miss Miskalki Bucks, at the Thomas Settlement near her home of Marshalltown. Uh, part of its dirty tricks aimed at black liberation anti-war groups, which began in 1968. The FBI became aware of several gifts Seberg had made to the Black Panther Party, totaling $10,000 in contributions. These were noted among other celebrities in FBI internal documents, later declassified and re released to the public under FOIA requests. The FBI operation against Seberg, directly overseen by J. Edgar Hoover, used COINTEL Pro program techniques to harass, intimidate, defame, and discredit her. The FBI's stated goal was an unspecified neutralization of Seberg with an, a subordinary objective to cause her embarrassment and to serve to cheapen her image within the public. While taking the usual precautions to avoid identification of the Bureau, FBI strategy and modalities can be found in, 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 in inter-office memos that were made visible from FOIA. In 1970, the FBI created a false story from a San Francisco-based informant that the child Seberg was carrying was not fathered by her husband, but by somebody else, a member of the Black Panther Party. This was reported by a, j a gossip columnist and with Sen Seberg thinly disguised. It was also printed by Newsweek, in which Seberg was directly named. Seberg went into premature labor and gave birth to a baby girl. The, di the child died two days later. She had a funeral in her hometown with an open casket that allowed reporters to see the infant's skin, which disproved the rumors. Wow, that is fucked. Seberg and Gary later sued New Week for libel and def defamation, asking for 200000 in damages. She contended she became so upset that she went into premature labor, which resulted in the death of her daughter. Um, the investigation of Seberg went far beyond the publish publishing of defamatory articles. According to her friends interviewed after her death, she reportedly experienced years of aggressive in-person surveillance, constant stalking, as well as break-ins and other intimidation-oriented activity. These newspaper reports make it clear that Seberg was well aware of the surveillance. FBI files show that she was wiretapped. 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it looks like she disappeared in 1979 after being suicidal and she attempted suicide by jumping in front of a train. No, no, no. No, no, no. She committed suicide uh, by drinking barbiturates and she can no, no longer live with her nerves. Her death was ruled a probable suicide, but additional charges were filed against persons unknown for non-assistance of a person in danger. Okay, that's very weird. This in and of itself is very weird. But that doesn't prove anything. And a lot of people are discrediting this just because of the name similarity. And uh, I don't know about that. That that seems very um, weird. Yeah, Spitty Rainbow logo, you got it. That seems like a stretch to me. Also, there is a 2004 book named Gene S, which is a biography. This assume, assumedly is the book that she's referring to. So once again, it does appear, I mean, there is a book uh, that was adapted. Oh, wait, no, wait. Bo was a book about a teenage girl that was adapted into a movie. Let's see if we can find that. What is the name of that movie? Is Do we have a name of the movie? Do we know what it is? What is the, uh, what is this movie? I wish we could, I wish we could figure it out. Hmm. I guess it's neither here nor there. <sighs> yeah, of course. Now, names, remember everybody, names are really a stretch. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, this person picked a name that happens to be associated with somebody who was bullied by COINTELPRO? Well, okay. Uh, that's nice, but it doesn't prove anything. It, do it really doesn't prove anything. That is sort of definitionally conspiratorial, right? Like, it's taking, like, a thing and a thing. Yeah, I think it's very... It would be very silly to assume off the bat that this person is a plant. Although, of course... As we know from talking about Twitter all the time, um, you know, it is possible for anyone to make an account. Um, Twitter jumps to stupid conclusions. Is this about, is this still about Chapo stuff? Yes, it is. Of course it is. We're still talking about that. We're still sorting through this drama. Okay. So we're in a weird position. We're in a position where the evidence that's been provided is very, very limited. And we have a story that lines up with the correct times. Everything lines up according to the correct times. But there's just no evidence of actual interaction. Now, it is possible for this person to produce logs of FaceTime. I know for a fact that every single... A uh, phone carrier in the United States and Apple itself keeps a record of phone calls. So if they were FaceTiming, there should be a um, uh, uh, there should be a record of this, right? Um, there 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 should be some sort of record, but it's 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 a little bit difficult. It's it's difficult for us to say anything right now. Despite the fact that a lot of people are talking about this, and it is indeed true that there have been rumors, and it is also very weird that Virgil, Texas has sort of signaled uh, a lot of appreciation for Woody Allen, uh, who we know, we know about uh, Woody Allen, right? I assume it's not easy to get this stuff from Apple. That's not true. The, the, the person, if you are the person who made the calls, you could get those records. Those records could be released, right? So what we really need here is we need a real journalist, a journalist who can actually protect somebody to, to follow up on this story, 
to contact this Jessifer Seberg person and ensure their anonymity and confirm this. Because until that, until we get that, there is nothing we can follow from this. All we have is random Twitter person making somewhat, somewhat believable allegations, but we don't even know who that person is. We don't even know who they are. They're using a pseudonym. They haven't posted any sort of identity whatsoever. They haven't even made a reference to their identity. You can make you can make FaceTime calls through an iPad. It doesn't need cellular co connection. If the user is on Wi-Fi, say FaceTime is invisible to the carrier, but it's not invisible to a Apple. Apple keeps a record of that. So there is some stuff that could prove this. Also, a and posting an email response to um, uh, posting an email response to uh, um, from Virgil would also add some evidence here but as it stands right now whatever you feel about virgil whatever you feel about chapo trap house we do not have the evidence to to uh to consider these solid allegations all we have is a t is a believable timeline and um the the sort of go uh, the good faith assumption that uh that, that, that this is the case. However, I want to go a step further, okay? And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to reach out to this individual, okay? Because I am very interested in finding out more about this. So, I'm going to DM this individual if I can. Let's take a look. All right, there we go. Bam. Okay. Connection made, okay? I sent a little letter out to this individual, and the the wrap-up of this particular drama mama is going to end with us saying, we got to find out more. As it stands right now, we do not have anything to work with. But I think this is a very important uh, topic. So, for now, my recommendation is to treat this allegation as unsolved and in requiring and requiring of further evidence and we will see if perhaps we can make contact with jennifer seberg if we can perhaps get jennifer seberg to talk to a um a a, a journalist like somebody like ken Klippenstein, ken Klippenstein or something like that so we might get a drama mama part two on this but i think that it was interesting and I hope that everybody knows what the situation is right now, that this is what we have, that that is about all that we have, that we do have a timeline that lines up correctly, that the there aren't holes in the timeline, there aren't holes with regard to when names were being used, etc., cetera, et cetera. And that this person doesn't seem interested in engaging with right-wing sources. To me... The fact that they are yet unwilling to engage with right-wing sources is a very good sign. But we will have to see. We cannot conclude anything. Um, if somebody was being, uh, if this was purely a disinformation campaign or an attempt to destroy uh, Virgil, Texas, this per it would not make sense for this person to not talk to right-wing sources. Does that make sense? That is not, that motive doesn't line up. If you were just trying to dis to, uh, further damage um virgil texas what you would do is you would get this story out instantly to as many people as possible but that has not happened so that is a good that is a sign in the right direction i would be very 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 sad uh to find out that this was uh that this allegation is is uh you know fabricated but there is no evidence yet to show that it would be fabricated there are no glaring hypocrisies in their story there are no glaring timeline issues in their story right now what is most needed is more evidence right-wing sources would need a real person though no absolutely not no 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 this doesn't matter. The right has their talking point to defend the Brett Kavanaugh's and Matt Gates out there. It really sucks for the victims out there because they have to think about this now. Um, well, everyone has to think about this. This is a reality. This is a reality of um, 
of of any sort of public allegation it is a it is when you make a public allegation it is only natural that people will ask questions and we should be careful when we ask those questions you know and i i did my best to be diplomatic in my message um but uh but yeah um, it is impossible. It is impossible to not have people ask questions. After all, we would run into an issue, right? If if every single allegation was taken at face value, well, then I mean, you guys would have to believe that I'm a genocide denier, right? We all here should recognize that there is a risk of of um, of false allegations or of in or of incomplete allegations of uh misremembered things but that doesn't mean that we should disregard uh allegations out of hand serious allegations require follow-up and we shouldn't just spread serious allegations without finding the evidence necessary to back them up this is a this is a mature process y y you understand like there's this this idea online that you immediately should some people will tell you oh you should immediately retweet every allegation you see believe all victims that's not what believing victims means um believing victims does not mean that you just immediately uh, immediately without any question spread whatever they're saying it means that you take a, a position of saying it is possible that this happened let's hear them out that's what it means that's what it means it means that you listen you hear what they have to say and you compare that with reality and you 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 engage with a a with compassion in your heart not jumping to conclusions that does not help anyone and in fact that makes it harder for victims because if if there is a social atmosphere where rampant allegations run amok all over the place, we end up in a situation where no victims can have their voice heard because everyone will just assume if it's somebody they like that it that the allegation is false, even though it very well could be true. I mean, this is the sort of thing that w was used by people like uh, like uh, um, Harvey Weinstein, right? Do we all remember Harvey Weinstein? that people didn't believe what happened because he was too powerful and because saying it could be written away and could be suppressed. This is the entire, this is a huge problem with the Me Too movement. And it's interesting because we've talked about major allegations in the past, haven't we? We've talked about major allegations against Joss Whedon, against um, the, the executives at DC Comics. If you go and watch my previous Drama Mama, we went through all of this and the allegations were widespread. They were corroborated by multiple people. And those people uh, uh, were able to provide all kinds of evidence. So we have to be careful how we handle these things and we should treat victims with respect and treat their story with due diligence. Does that make sense, everybody? So for now, we will consider this Drama Mama segment concluded until further notice. However, I will be following up on this story if I can. If there is no further information released, we will have no choice but to say it hangs in the in the in the ether. But hopefully, we can get some uh some some better info out there. And if any of you if any of you who are listening right now are a journalist or have a friend who's a journalist who could perhaps assist on this, please consider reaching out to them and putting us into contact or putting your contact into contact with, Jen with Jennifer Seberg. Because to be completely honest, that would be the best thing possible. I do not have the, uh, I do not have the, the institutional strength to protect someone's anonymity. But I might be able to find, I might be able to make a connection between someone who can. Does that make sense? So if you have somebody out there, make it happen, please. And that's that for this, for this segment. It sucks how the, how the left has to dig into something like this when the right will just run with anything. It's so easy being a right winger. Well, yes, because the right 
but there's a reason for that. The reason why the right is okay with running with misinformation is because they believe that misinformation is justified in the name of their goal. The right is more Machiavellian than the left in most cases. That's just true. They don't care if it's true as long as it's hurting somebody that they don't like. It's not that they don't have any morals. They just have different morals. Their moral structure says, hey, um, uh, their moral structure says, hey, if you need to do misinformation in order to advance, uh, you know, the, name it, uh, the national interest, God, uh, whatever, they will do that. It is a, it is a, it is part and parcel to the, to the ideology of the right, which is Machia Machiavellian. They, can you, I mean, think about this. If you believed that the, the God, that God, the God of the universe wanted you to fix America for him, would you not lie in the name of that goal? If you believe that God, the divine God of the universe required you to win back America, would you not lie or would you not look the other way on lies if it if it, if you believed it went to that goal that is that is the case and that is not to say by the way that's not to say that um that's not to say that there aren't lefties who are like this or that there aren't democrats that are like this it's just that the the structure the worldview of 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 left leaning people is very different than the worldview of right-leaning people. There are many Machiavellian liberals. There are many Machiavellian lefties. But it is rarely to the same degree because there's a different motivation. The lefties are, at least in the ideal, uh, with beholden to their to to the pe to their people. They are not beholden to some god or divine authority. That ultimately there is a material element that that makes the truth a little bit more. A little bit more important in the ideologies of the left.